Yikes. Fancy running into this sci-fi movie monster with metal fangs. Meet the bloodworm. You've probably been using this creepy crawly as fish bait and didn't notice that it's got a bite of its own. Ah! How do bloodworms use their fangs? How did all that metal get into their bodies? And is that green slime what we think it is? This is not your average squirming worm. Here's everything you should know about the venomous bloodworm. If you're willing to sink a bit more than your toes in the dirt, you can find bloodworms all along the Atlantic coast of North America in intertidal and subtidal mud banks. That's the soggy, slippery parts of ocean shores accessible only at low tide. The bloodworm's jaw is located in its digestive tract, and it's equipped with four black venomous fangs. Slithering through its muddy world, the bloodworm uses sensors on the tip of its nose to detect bite-sized mollusks or crustaceans nearby. The moment a critter is within its reach, it will invert its entire digestive tract to form a proboscis with its terrifying fang-bearing jaw at the very end. The fangs owe 10% of their weight to copper and are tough enough to puncture the shells of crustaceans. They contain 32 different types of venom, 12 of which are unique to this worm that kill the prey instantly. Then the bloodworm's jaws clamp shut and pull the prey back into its slimy gut hole. That's funny, that's what I call the subway. But how does the bloodworm get its custom copper fang trimmings? Approximately two millimeters in length, they're made of a unique melanin polymer toughened and sealed together with copper. No lab has been able to recreate melanin into this unique structure. Melanin in your hair and skin determines how dark it gets. Seen under a microscope, it naturally settles into random blobs. We're still puzzling over how exactly this 35 centimeter long worm is able to mold into fangs that last its entire life. Part of the answer might lie in what scientists call multitasking protein. Found in the bloodworm's jaw, the protein helps it collect copper from ocean floor sediment and then use it as a catalyst to form melanin. It's unclear why the worm uses copper instead of other less toxic metals like iron or zinc. It may be that the copper is reacting with the venom to increase its potency in some way. Like comic book villains, it takes more than just a clever science experiment to unleash evil. Eyes, lungs, pancreas. Bloodworms are also naturally ill-tempered and antisocial. They don't think twice about biting, even if it means fighting each other when a bloodworm wanders into the wrong burrow. This feisty temper comes at a cost. When things get heated, fighting tooth and tail, it helps that a bloodworm can regrow the lower end of its body. But it can't regrow its famous fang-bearing digestive tract or brain. So if a bloodworm's venom can stop the heart of a small crustacean, what happens if you get bitten by one? A bloodworm bite feels like a bee sting and can be painful. You won't die from it, but as with bee stings, some people can have an allergic reaction to the venom. And yes, to answer the question that's been making us squirm, that filthy mouth is often full of sh <clears throat> regurgitated matter. The bloodworm has an anus, which it doesn't defecate from. Instead, it's used as a digestive gland. Nice. Can't get enough of nasty worms? Meet the horrific bobbit worm in another episode of Crazy Creatures. Growing custom-built copper fangs and regurgitating from their mouths is what bloodworms do. And that's why they're crazy creatures. <laughs>